have a Sony camera, any of the other shitty cameras will work. The instructions just might vary a little. That being said, we're going to go ahead and open up DaVinci Resolve. Sun has created a new project, so that's pretty straightforward. If you don't know how to do that, you're in the wrong video. So we're going to go ahead and import some sample clips. That you have all your footage in there, go ahead and go to the color tab and we're going to start. So step one of this process is you're going to have to shoot in log. We've already done that, so we're going to move to step two, which is we need to convert our footage from log to a workable color space. I'm going to go ahead and create three serial nodes. You can either hit Alt S to create the serial node, or you can go ahead and right click add node serial node. I'm going to go ahead and hit Alt S three times one two three i'm gonna go ahead and raise up the third node and i'll tell you why in a second so on the third node i'm gonna go ahead and right click i'm gonna go to lut now davinci resolve already gives us some conversion luts which is perfect i'm gonna go ahead and use the actual sony lut that converts slog 3 to rec 709 but you can use any conversion lut you'd like but just take note if you do do that it's going to change everything i'm about to tell you so i'm gonna go ahead and click Sony S-Log3 to Rec 709. Now you're going to say, whoa, that doesn't look good. Well, that's because I overexposed S-Log3 properly and we just need to recover our highlight detail that we earned from overexposing. I have you raise the third node is because we're going to go ahead and lock it and not touch it for the rest of this video. I'm going to go ahead and start applying changes to the node to node number one before the conversion LUT, so my edits are going into the conversion LUT and not changing the actual conversion LUT. So on node number one, we're going to go ahead and pull our highlight detail down. Go ahead and grab this top ball. We're going to go ahead and pull this down. And if you look to the bottom right of the screen, you're going to see all of that highlight detail that we are able to recover because we're shooting in log. So now that we have our highlights right about where we want them, we're gonna go ahead and touch our blacks is what I like to do. So if you look at the bottom right of the screen once again, you're gonna see how it's not touching the bottom of the histogram. So what I like to do is I like to move the bottom curve to the right until we're about where we like it. That looks good. And now that I've done that, kinda wanna move my highlights a little more, but for fine tuning, I'm gonna go over to the left side of the screen for the highlight, for the highlight scroller, I call it. That looks good. So, you can see how this image looks a little washed out. Let's go ahead and up our saturation a touch. And maybe some color boost in the bottom left. Just a little. So that's pretty good. And you can see, if I just toggle off the number one, you can see how much of an image I recovered. And we're still in a Rec. 709 color space. What I also like to do next is I like to take up my mid-tone detail. We'll go about 40. That might be a little much, but we can always change it later. Next, what I like to do, still on node number one, is the color balance eyedropper. Try to find a neutral gray to click on. So you can see I, I had my color balance pretty set. You didn't have to change that much. Okay, so from that to that, it's looking pretty good. On node number two, before our conversion let, node number two, we're going to do a very tiny S-curve. Now, why would you do an S-curve versus contrast? An S-curve will give you a different exposure curve versus a contrast. A S-curve will give you a different look than just using the contrast slider. Um, both do essentially the same, but an S-curve will give you different exposure dynamics. So on node number two, I'm going to go ahead and touch in the about middle of the screen and, and barely push it up and then I'm gonna click on right about there and I'm gonna pull that down just a touch now in doing so I see that I'm kind of clipping where the light is bouncing off my face you can see that in a histogram and right here so I'm gonna go ahead and pull down my highlights in node number two cool so we went from that to that and you can see how much of a small change that was but it does change the image makes it more contrasty again you could just use the contrast slider works about the same but i just feel that the the uh s curve gives you a different type of contrast so step number four is going to be using the qualifier and setting our stylistic background color so how do you do that the node right after your conversion let you're going to go ahead and 
select it and you're going to change the background color to whatever color you'd like so you can change it to orange you know blue dark green so i'm going to go ahead and go for a nice greenish teal kind of like you see uh about right there maybe a little more blue and i'm using the offset wheel to do this i kind of like a bluer greener tint so might use some temperatures on the on the primaries you could use the temperature scroller and the tint scroller to get the type of color you're looking for okay so we'll just go with that i'm not looking to do anything special on node number four we're going to go ahead and right click that you're going to go to add node and you're going to add a layer now what is this going to do what is an add layer node what it does basically is it splits your node into two and it mixes them so if i were to do alt s after the add layer node you're going to see how these two nodes are going to merge into this mixer and it's going to go output into this node so you can see once we hit add layer it it got rid of our color now why did it do that now it's waiting for us to tell us where what do you want mixed why, why am i splitting this node into two because I want to tell number five node right here, I want to I want to mask out my skin tones. I don't want my skin tones to be blue. I'm going to go to the qualifier tab in the middle of the screen. Then I'm going to go ahead and select. I'm going to hold down left click and I'm going to go along my face right here. So let's go ahead and do that. And you can see as I'm doing that, it's it's masking out the oranges of the of the image. Now, once you do that, you're going to notice there might be some things in your image that are also skin colored. You can see this artifacting back here. So what you could do is in the middle of the screen, you're going to go ahead and go to blur radius. You can bump that up a couple notches. And you can go to number two right here. You can go to uh, denoise. That's also good to use. Now, I'm not really liking this color I selected, so you can always go back. I'm going to go back to node number four. I'm going to select it. I'm going to change that a little bit. So maybe... That's a little better. Once you use the qualifier and you mask out everywhere that you want to mask out. I see that my skin's a little oversaturated, so I'm going to go ahead and go on the what I selected. I'm going to go ahead and bump that saturation down. If you see, you can make yourself black and white if you'd like to do that. You make it the Hulk or whatever. Desaturate my skin just a touch. And you can see how important it is to mask out you, your skin tones because if you don't, you're going to get this image and you're going to look like a little amateur. So on note number seven here, it's going to depend on your, it's going to depend on your image. What are you recording? But in this instance, I'm, I want to go ahead and apply a mask or a vignette to draw my, draw my viewer's eye in more because I'm getting a little distracted from the background. Like I, I, I want to look over here. Ooh, what's that lamp? I don't, I don't want to see that lamp. So how do we do this on a new node? Make sure you're on a new node. You're going to go ahead and go to the window tab. There's multiple ways to apply a vignette. This is just the way I do it. All right. So on a new note, you're going to go ahead and go to the window tab in the middle of the screen. Depending on your image, you can use the square to, you know, mask out like a road or a sky. That's I do that a lot with skies. But what we're going to do right now is going to, we're going to use a circle window. You're going to go ahead and apply it to your subject. However you please. I think that looks pretty good. So we're going to go ahead and click this button in the middle of the screen. It's going to invert the mask. You can also see that if you go to the top middle left, this little wand, you can see what you're editing. So if I were to do that, it's going to edit the middle of the screen. If I do this, it's going to edit the outside of the screen once I um, go to the curves and darken it. So with that selected, I'm going to go to the curves. I'm going to bring this ball at the top right down. And you see it's going to make, if I do it too much, it's going to look like that. So I'm going to darken it just a little bit. And I'm going to fix my mask how I would like it. Just from that, you can see 
it makes your subject pop just a little more now when you're doing this keep in mind it's going to be based off your image it's not going to be you know you put one vignette in one area and it's going to work every single time so in this case the subject stays pretty much dead center of the screen so i'm gonna go ahead and apply another window that's inverse of the vignette so i go ahead and make the skin tones pop so you're going to click on your newest node alt s to add a new serial node now that we have our new window we're going to go ahead and go back to the curves we're going to make a curve right in the middle of the screen and we're going to pull up don't pull up too much, you will blow out your highlights. This is just a subtle change. So I might want to move this just a touch that way. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with that. And you can just, it's very subtle, but you can tell that difference. So we're almost done with this image. I'm going to do one more Alt S. And I'm going to go ahead and do my final tweakings. So the way I do that is I go to the curves. I put a dot there I put a dot there and I put a dot there now these are very again these are going to be very subtle adjustments but it can change how your image looks so I'm just going to go ahead and play with these until I find until I find something that I like so I'm pretty happy with those last adjustments again it's very subtle but it really enhances your image so let's go ahead and review what we did by turning every node off. So we went ahead and started with a log image. Then we went ahead and applied a conversion let to work in a Rec 709 color space. Next, we made adjustments to pull down the highlights and add contrast, saturation, and using the curves. Next, we wanted to add some stylistic qualities instead of just having a plain image. So on the next node, we went ahead and added our background color. Then we added a layer and used the qualifier to mask out our skin tone. After the mixer, we went ahead and applied a vignette. So our viewer is drawn to our main subject. Then we added an inverse window to make our skin tones pop. And lastly, our final adjustments on the image. And now we have our final product.